YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over how to turn like any object in your photo or video into like a ripped piece of paper, basically like separating it from the background and making it look like you just like ripped it out of there. I have some tutorials similar to this in the past, but I found like kind of like a secret sauce way to do it, super simple. We're gonna be using my texture pack. If you guys aren't familiar with it already, I promote it in all my videos. It's a paper texture pack. It helps you get paper ripped fold effects and transitions. It's available on my website, briandelmata.com. You can go check it out in the description down below, as well as I have some other packs that are coming out and some that are already out. It's the best way to support me as a creator and support the channel. I have a playlist with over like 20 tutorials just on the paper texture pack itself. So there's definitely not a shortage of effects you can do with it. So if you like this one or you're like a little on edge, go check out some other of the tutorials first. And then you can go see if you like the pack and see if it fits what you want to do with your video editing style. I personally like using the paper rip effects and transitions kind of just to give a little bit extra spice to your video. It's nothing like super, super flashy. I guess you can kind of make it that way, but I just like the simplicity of like the transitions and just the effects. And it's always easy to add some paper sound effects to it too so it's just like a nice like texture shot i figured i'd go over a tutorial on my paper pack because i haven't done that in a while there's a lot of new subscribers that maybe don't know about it i like to keep you guys up to date with like how i've been using it and like what i've learned about the pack and like different ways you can use it because it's crazy i think i released it in december and i'm still making tutorials about it like six months later so i feel like that just kind of goes to show just how many different ways you can actually use the pack I'm currently working on a V2 of the Ultimate Texture Bundle. I think I'm gonna release it around 50,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do so. I make tutorials on YouTube, pretty much music video effects and breakdowns. If you haven't already, like and comment. If you comment something about you wanting the V2, I'll give away the V2 to someone in the comments when it comes out. Like I said, 50,000 subscribers, so we're still a little bit away. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video and kind of break down the new way of how to turn anything into a piece of paper. So you can see I have Premiere pulled up. This is the effect that I came up with. I kind of just had a little Dirk almost rip up. It'd be really good with some sound effects. I didn't include it in this video, but you could just have like some paper ripping. It would really add a lot of texture to the music video and just make it overall better. But you can see it's pretty much just three frames and then I added a little bit of a paper texture for the background for this two frames just so it has a little flash too almost i think it just ties the effect together i'm gonna go ahead and delete these just so we can get into the effect and all you need to do is just take a screenshot from the clip you want to transition into so i i would always take it from the first frame of the clip you're transitioning into and then go just go to here and click export frame you can click Control shift e if you want to and if you don't see that you can click uh, the button editor down here and then go to the camera and add it and then just find somewhere where you want to save it and click OK. After that, hop into Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is just do a really rough outline of them with the pen tool. I like to keep it pretty boxy because we're actually just going to be erasing anyways. So it doesn't really matter too much on how perfect it is. So I'm just going to go pretty quick and then right click and click Make Selection. And then go ahead and click OK. And then just click Control J. And that's going to duplicate the layer. So you can see now you have a little dirt separated from the background. And I just like keeping the background there so you can kind of reference it throughout. And then we're gonna need some kind of paper texture. I'm gonna be using from my Ultimate Texture Bundle, the Paper Rips and Folds Pack, and I'm gonna be using Short 9 here. And then what I like to do is kind of just position it so it fits around Dirk pretty well. Let's see, like I'm gonna use it. We can go to screen right now just so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna make it so the rip part is kind of around his torso, so there's not much we have to do as far as uh, really tweaking stuff. And then I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and maybe rotate it. So we got that white line at the bottom. I think that looks pretty cool. That's pretty good for right now. You just want it to be like relatively the same size as your subject. And then this is where the secret sauce comes in, the way that I found that really helps just like morph it to your subject without having to put in a lot of work. Clicked on your paper rip, on your short nine layer or the paper layer, and then go to edit, and then go to puppet warp here. And then I'm gonna go up to density and click more points. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to tweak some stuff. And then just add some points kind of around the outline of where you're gonna wanna tweak. So I'm just like adding like a few throughout. Cause once you start tweaking, you'll see it like starts moving stuff. So then go to one of the spots where you want and then kind of just position it around your subject. In our case, Dirk here. The more you stretch it, the more pixelated it's gonna be. So keep that in mind. You don't wanna go like super, super crazy, but you can push it pretty hard without actually making it look really bad. Go around our subject as best as possible. The stuff you have to pull out more, the more points you're probably going to have to add. And it's going to look the most pixelated out of all of it. it may take a little bit of time, but it will uh, be worth it and look good. 
but it's way faster than the alternative of like copy and pasting and kind of ways I've shown in the past. So I'm glad I found this. I think it's really cool. And then some places I like to go through and just kind of thin out the edges so you can kind of smush the white parts together to kind of make them not as thick because sometimes when you do do stretching it does make your uh like the white parts or the rip part like really really thick and it might look cool in some cases but sometimes it looks a little weird like for example here i'm gonna go ahead and kind of do that so it doesn't have much of a look there then for the top of the head here you can kind of just close it in like that and we can always tweak some stuff later so then i'm gonna go ahead and click enter and that's just gonna lock it in you can see what you kind of have here you have this pretty good overlay and it looks like it's kind of being ripped from paper and then since it makes it a smart filter you can always go through double click back on it and kind of change some things i think i'm gonna make this white part over here a little less stretched out and then i'm gonna go ahead and bring in just the same thing again the short nine and you'll see why in a second basically what i'm gonna do is just give dirk a texture basically look like he's uh on paper. I'm going to drag that short layer right above the layer of the cutout dirk. So you can see there. I'm going to bring it right above and then right click and create clipping mask and then go to screen. And now I'm going to bring that short nine layer that we had below dirk. It has that paper look, but it's also not like completely like stretched. You can see the spots where you stretch are kind of hidden now and it looks good. And you can turn back on that layer and that's looking actually really really good and then i'm just going to go ahead and merge the short nine and layer of dirt because we don't really need them separate layers right now so you can just click rasterize layer and then click merge layers and that's just going to make it into one layer so now the cutout of dirt is just already just a piece of paper and then i'm going to go to an eraser and i'm going to use if you're a fan of the channel and you see my paper texture packs I always use the eraser kyle's natural edge from the mega pack i'll have it linked below it's free for adobe users it's uh like a really good eraser just to make that paper look and then i'm just going to go through some of the edges and kind of just erase it a little bit so it has a little bit more of a harsh edge you can keep them super straight or whatever but i kind of like this rough edges maybe some spots keep it and then some spots you can play around with whatever you like it definitely gives it a lot more of that paper rip feel but you don't really have to do it anywhere i just kind of like touching up edges of spots maybe up here a little bit now what I like to do is highlight both these layers, click Control J, and then turn off the bottom layers and maybe make a make a group called Backup or something just so you can access those layers because we're going to do some destructive stuff to it now. So just turn off that group and then go ahead and merge these two. And then I'm going to turn off the background layer and go to File, Save As. And sometimes this happens. I've noticed Photoshop's been doing this recently where you go to File, Save As, and you can't save it as a PNG. So if anyone in the comments knows how to fix that, let me know. You can just go ahead and click export and then quick export as png what i'm going to do is basically cut it down into three separate pieces so i'll probably go like a little bit around a third of the way down and i'm just going to use the polygon tool here maybe give it a little bit of an angle and then just go ahead and click delete on that and you can see what that does you can leave it like this or you can bring back in a short nine real quick or whatever paper rip i just i've just been using this one throughout the whole thing but it really doesn't matter and then i'm going to drag it behind and kind of just put it somewhere where it would match that all on rip it doesn't have to be too precise because it's only going to be up for a few frames anyways so then what i'm going to do is just go around the edges and kind of delete the spots that aren't necessarily being used right now so then make sure to rasterize it and then you can click delete and then i'm just going to go through i'm going to drag it down a little bit because i'm actually going to erase on the the layer with dirk first You can see that looks pretty good and then i'm just going to go right over here where that thing kind of sticks out and then you can see that's what it's going to look like so that's why i keep the background layer on you now you can go ahead and tweak anything you want i think i like pretty much exactly how it looks maybe just fix an edge or two but yeah it's only going to be up for a little bit so it doesn't really matter too much and then you can go to file export as quick png and then since we already have that rip i'm just going to go ahead and turn that layer off real quick we can drag it to the side actually and then i'm going to do the same thing just to make it a little bit more of a rip so it's going to be our third one or probably our first one actually in the sequence but our third one we've made and then i'm going to drag that short nine back down you can use a different one if you want it to look if you want it to be a lot different but for how quick it's going to be up i don't really think it matters too much you can stretch it a little bit just to make it look a little bit different and then do that same process with the eraser 
and then just fix the edges. I like to turn the background when I do that just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And then I'm gonna turn off the background layer, go and export it as a PNG one last time. And that's pretty much it for the Photoshop side of things. I'm gonna go ahead and import those three photos that we just made and just open them up in Premiere. And then I'm gonna drag the frame so it goes right over that frame of Dirk. And then I'm gonna go three frames to the left. One, two, three. It really doesn't matter exactly how long you do, but I like just three frames. I think it looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three with that second rip. And then one, two, three with the last rip. And you can see if you play it slowly, that's how it rips up. You can have it rip in any way or whatever and have it come up. You can have it more or less, whatever. And then the last thing I'm gonna do just to kind of have it that flash and kind of give it that transition look, I'm gonna go ahead and just import a paper texture from my paper texture pack. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I think I'm gonna use black scratch 11 and then drag it right there and scale it to frame size because it is in 4K and our timeline is in 1080p. And then I'm just gonna turn the rotation so it fits properly and scale it up and then go to screen. You can see it kind of has that paper crumple look. The one in the example I did was more of a rip or a more of a scratch one, but it doesn't really matter what you use. And I'm also just gonna bring on color balance, HLS, and desaturate that so it kind of just is black and white. And then I just drug it so it lasts two frames, so it is the last frame in this scene, and then it's gonna hop over to this scene and flash. And if you render that out, you can kind of see that transition. I think it's super, super simple and clean. And that's why I, that's what I was talking about, where it's like not super flashy, but it's just a little bit something as transitions. I think it looks really good if you do it throughout the music video and just kind of have that theme. But the reason I really wanted to make this tutorial was just to show the use of the puppet tool where you can really have the paper rips go around any object. Like if you wanted to do this car, you could do the car and just do the puppet warp. And you can use not just from the paper rips and folds, you can use like the these black sheets and stuff. You can use basically anything from the pack and do that concept with. I just wanted to show you a simple way of doing it because I know, I think the way I kind of explained it before, it, was, it wasn't it was too hard, but it definitely was more time consuming and a lot more like complex. This is pretty basic effect to do for a really, really cool look. Because now you can do like circles, basically like any shape, object, trees, all that stuff that maybe would have been hard for you to do before. So if you're interested in the pack, I'll have a link down below. It's briandelmata.com. It's the best way to support me as a creator for sure. It helps me be able to do these YouTube videos and tutorials and keep on doing them for you guys. And since you made it all the way to the end, if you type in code END at checkout, I'll give you like 10% off the bundles. So yeah, if you're interested, I would definitely use that and save yourself a little bit of money. I appreciate everyone making it all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. We're going for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do that. Maybe go ahead and tell a video editor friend or director or someone that's just like a visual creative and interested in this kind of stuff. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.